Hey there everyone, this is Life. Welcome back to my playthrough of Between Odyssey 3, and in this part we are going to do B14 for quest. We're gonna be ignoring Evil's hobby until the next bow rush. Sorry. Uh but anyways, today we're gonna do Statues of Imitation, Treasures of the Deep, and then we're gonna do some sea quest bosses. Okay, Statues of Imitation. I entered the hall on the B14th floor, statue suddenly blocked my way, and I couldn't get any further. Please get rid of it, paralysis hammer. Awesome, let's do it. You're accepting this request? Oh, you're such a big help. This one's from the Herm. You know the northern hall on the B14th floor? When someone enters, the device activates statue monsters. It would be super helpful if somebody could figure out how to turn off that device. If somebody doesn't do something, this could be causing trouble to a whole lot of people. You know what I'm getting at, yes? Please, help me. Help harm. <laughs> help your fellow explorers. We're all counting on you. Go forth. Awesome. And treasure of the depths. Give me some rare items. Oh, that's a request from an antique collector, Wilbur. He wants some relics in the Abyssal Shrine, but he doesn't know what's down there. Such a stupid request. I can't stand these amateur clients. Get your ideas straight. Anyways, I have no idea what, uh, what he was wanting either. Ha <laughs> ha, sorry. He wants one antique item, your choice, just find something and bring it back. The girl up in the pier and knows something about treasure, perhaps you should ask her. Well, I trust you'll be getting the job done. Go forth, explorers. Now, anticlimatics. Is if you go to Navir's firm, she and talk to her, she's gonna recommend you this face and for three thousand n. It's actually pretty cheap. But anyways, if you do it and turn it in after getting that base, you'll get a death magatama as well as the uh, thing. So if you want your own death magatama for whatever reason, you can do that. I don't remember exactly what you do if you get the antique from the labyrinth. I've actually never done that before, so I'm gonna go get that done now for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, Okay, as you walk through a hall, countless statues appear in a roaring sound. They don't seem to attack you, but they are not moving from their positions. Remember your request to accept it to stop the statues from appearing. It seems that whatever device is summoning them is reacting to intruders. You are free to search the way to stop the statues from appearing, or you can leave. Yeah, yeah, I would love to do this quest, but first I want to get to the antique. So, the pen these pincer statues will appear normally later, so you don't have to worry about ruining 100% completion if you don't fight one. So, And they're really just like a normal enemy, you can just instant kill it. That's how easy it is. It doesn't give a lot of EXP either, and when you walk right in front of it, it appears right back. It's not useful for EXP grinding, because the ants are more useful for EXP grinding. And even the starfish are better for EXP grinding, so don't EXP grind here. Your EXP grinding here is a little pointless. So anyways, let's go get that uh, antique first, and then I'm going to tell you just how stupendously easy the statue quest is. And believe me, the first time I did this, I had like 10 gajillion uh, index cards until I finally tried that the solution I'm gonna show you in a bit. You see a mountain of a junk piled high on the corner of the room. You recall the request you accepted to find an antique for a collector. These ruins are centuries old. You may be able to find something there for him. You climb the mountain of rubbish and begin digging through it. Mina, that's a shout out. It seems that Mina has found something. It's a coin that you've never seen before. Could it be a currency from centuries ago? You take the coin, turn it back in, or else try something else. Return with this antique. No. You may find a more appropriate item in a different pile. You toss this item you found back into the heap and begin looking again. Okay, let's let's see what's in this pile. Stop in front of a huge junk pile in the corner of a room. You begin pawing through it, looking for something that would interest the client. Lara lets out a shout. It seems like Lara has found something. It's a large plate made of something mysteriously lightweight material. You can take this large plate back, turn it in, or look for something else. Alright. Uh, let's see. Is there more junk piles where that came from? I don't know, BRB. Okay, I think there's another junk pile here. Stop and run with a huge junk pile in the room. Ping pong through it. Something for client. Mina lets out a shout. It's a silver candlestick, candlestick with gorgeous decorations advocate for the period. You can take this candlestick back and turn it in or try looking for something else. Okay, well, that, okay, that's three junk piles. See, there's a lot of junk piles around here. So, to see here, that's a candlestick. Uh, one's a coin. I don't know if, what different results I'll get for turning these different ones in. So, let's just keep investigating for more junk piles. Oh boy. Stop in front of a huge junk pile in the corner of the room. Begin falling through it. Interest the client. Find something. It's an exquisite statue of a beautiful woman. It seems unbelievably lifelike. You can take the statue back and turn it in or look for something else. Ah. So many different choices that I don't know what exactly each of them will reward you with. Hold on, be it back in a second. Alright, where was I? A uh, statue. Okay, so we got a statue, a coin, a candlestick, 
Okay, a statue, a candlestick, a coin, and something else. Oh, we got like a some material, lightweight material. It. I don't think there's any other corners to investigate besides these four. I don't know. I'm gonna keep looking around the room. Yeah, okay, so we got these four. Is it different for each corner? Coin? I guess the character that finds it is random. Um, is this also the coin? Yes, it's- okay, so this is the coin. Okay, there's like four different items. I guess it, you have to weigh which one may be more valuable. So here, we, there we got a coin, here we got a silver plate, here we got a candlestick, and here we got a... statue. Um, if I had to make a guess, I'd take the statue? I mean, silver candlestick's made of silver, I guess that'd be valuable, but I don't know what reward you get for each one. It's vexing that I don't know which one gives me what. I'll take the statue, and I'll see what that gets you. If you know the results for the other ones, do share. Okay, take a statue. Well, let's get- take the beautiful statue. Carefully wrap the statue in cloth and put it in your backpack. Take it to the bar. Because apparently we can only take one statue, only once one. So, that's without a question right there. I'll take that. Uh, let's go get the statue quest done, and it, this one is extremely easy. You cannot mess this one up. The, the solution is so super easy, and the first time I did this, I had index card on index card of different possible solutions, so I didn't think it would be this one. This one's ridiculous. Okay. There's three switches. One's labeled full circle, target, and X. Experiment with switches. The X is the reset button, and the rest of the symbols do something. Remove three from, from around you, and the solution is this. It's... It's so stupidly easy. Okay, then you walk out here, and we just- basically you just hit each switch once. It, it doesn't require anything else, you just hit each switch once. And when I was going through the index cards, I didn't think hitting each switch mo once would be logical, but apparently if you work it out, it turns out that's the correct solution. Click of a switch, the roaring echoes from the area, and the statues disappear, a solemn silence fills the undersea shrine once again. You have accomplished the quest, go back to the bottom and report your success. Yeah, that was the solution. During my first playthrough, I went through 45 minutes of worth of index cards, trying different solutions with different ideas in mind. And when I was finally just like fed up with it, I decided to try some mundane ones. So I tried one of each and it worked. And that's how I figured it out the first time. And now that I look back on it, it's like, why didn't I try that first? Is that if you think just like try randomly and you think oh hey i'll just try one of each you'll get this done like super quick but if you're if you don't think if if your brain does not process that the simplest answer is the best one then it, it just becomes a problem that doesn't it so i'm gonna cut all the way back to the bar and i'm gonna see you guys in a few seconds all right we return to the bar let's see what we get for our statues and limitation paralysis hammer okay complete Welcome back! Were you able to turn off whatever is making the statues appear? I see. I wonder what made such an annoying machine. Seriously, it's just an inexcusable. But now, Herm will be safe to investigate the ruins. Well, safer anyway. Your keen intellects will buy you victory this time. You deserve the reward. Here, take it. Stun hammer. A little bit of XP. Not much. Goes far, though. Alright, and treasures of the depths. It Okay, in addition to these, I believe I've already- I might have mentioned this, I might have not, so I'm gonna say it again anyway. You can buy a jar from the Pyrrhus firm if you talk to her for 3,000, and I'll get you a Death Megatama. But I don't know what the bonus, uh, items are if you do it the other ways. So, that's what we're gonna see. Let you get the job done. What a strange statue. She says something different for each one. I'm guessing, too. So, if you notice any, like, peculiarly long words in the other ones, then do bring that up, too, because I don't know what the other solutions are. Have huge eyes like this? Fascinating. I'm not sure Morn Wilbur would like this. He kind of likes... Looks like this, too. In any case, here's a reward. Good job, as always. Energy bracelet, and that's it. By the jar, you got a Death Nagatama with it. So I'm guessing it doesn't really matter which one you bring at, at this rate. So, that's that. We'll, we'll go ahead and get Sorrow Toby Provoke combo for regular fights. Since she works kind of both ways, it's fine with me. Now we'll get Ro unbind. Why not? Sarah's fine. Mina! What was I working on with you? I still don't have Bushin, that's right. Get Bushin. Uh, Lyra! 
has a level. Okay, great. So, I guess that means we're doing sea quest now. Let's go ahead and uh, rest the team up and get ready to do that. Uh, we'll start, as usual, with the first ones that I haven't fought and work our way up to see how far we can go. Since the game saves each time, I'm not worried if I fail on one, so let's, let's do this. It's been a while since I've been to the port, so I'm going to also check for any tanyons. Our year of voyage is going well. Remember our talk about the pirates, right? Well, thanks to you, the pirates in the South Seas have all but disappeared. With the pirates on the run, the Synodist seeks them to the North Seas, and here's the North Banner. Yeah, I got the Black Banner earlier. You just get them from automatically coming here, so I don't think it's too big of a deal that you don't, whether or not you know what the South Banner is either. Black plated armor on a pirate ship is a sign of especially notorious pirates. They are clear, at least until you get the next gun. Hopefully someday we'll upgrade your cannon, but then you'll stand a chance against them. For now, try to sink as many of these sea dogs as possible. We'll be counting on you. North Banner. Okay, great. We got North Banner. I'm gonna check for Tenyons. If there is one, I'll go fish it. If there isn't, then I won't bother. There isn't, so I won't bother. Sea quest. Solo. Saved again. Ah, oh, I hate doing these solo, but fortunately, this is not real life, so I can't get my any of my friends to help me. So, okay, Marine City of Sheba. The name Marine City of Sheba has cut through relationships with other countries, so the new sea lane has reopened re-communication with monster-filled whirlpools of threat. Okay. And if, as usual, I'm just gonna pick the one that only has one person in it, and I'm gonna do the rest off-screen. I know it's different for each situation, but it's- I just don't find purpose of showing it off more than the first time, so... Hoplite from Armroad summoned from the Queen of Sheba, fought the Calamity, he fought and died, but now his descendant has sworn revenge. I'm Laura. Blah 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 blah. Ancestor, blah 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 blah. Okay. She's level 38, mine's level 48, so obviously I'm totally in clearance for doing this. If you have metal pawns, those are nice to come in with, uh, because it will are a princess slash prince skill that gets rid of the enemy's buffs. That helps too. Uh those are the primary helps of this fight. Unfortunately, I have neither, so I'm just gonna have to live with the fact that it's gonna raise its fire resistance every once in a while. So, let's go in with Mina to help instant kill the minions. Go with Lyra, multi-hit the minions with Cloudbuster spams. Uh, Kiera for healing. And... Amina for no reason other than again. Awesome, let's do this. We're going with Wind Tactic and Wind Tactic. I want to go in with Hellfire, but I know it's going to set up the fire resistance first turn, which is a shame. But okay, Wind Tactic, and we'll use. Oh, I'll I'll use Lethal Tactic. If you want to, the, you can beat this boss by brute forcing way through it with physical attacks. Waiting for the fire resistance to go away and mailing on it with the fire attack. Or you can get rid of the fire resistance and get rid of it in general, but it's just hard. She, uh, I really don't like this one. It's not my favorite. In most of my other game, run of the game, I don't have too many problems with the Karadun goal, but otherwise it's a big issue that he sets up with resistance to fire, so I just never bring anyone who associates fire. So... Now that I'm done complaining, let's get this started. Do set up a provoke. Now, Sword Toby isn't at max efficiency yet, nor is provoke. But I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. Layra is going to set up the Berserker Vow, then she's going to just set up Charge Cloud Bust. No, she can't charge the Cloud Bust. She's just going to set up uh, Berserker Vow, launch Cloud Bust. I might use Wolf Howl, though. So let's just use Berserker Vow first. It has a flood attack that will multi-hit everyone and put everyone to sleep, which is really annoying. I don't like it. And I thought it would uh, use, set up its fire resistance first turn. Apparently it's random, which is fine with me. But I really need my teammate to be awake. Be extremely nice. And when these uh, these things die, they do some sort of multi-hit attack or something. I don't remember. So, just keep spamming. It, it's not that hard to describe this fight, it's just boring. And that, that's dead. No, it's, yeah, it's dead. Oh, it's a multi-hit confuse. Oh, it's annoying. This fight's just annoying in general. I don't like it very much. I have to usually use party refresh, otherwise I just screw myself. <sighs> Overall, it, it, it's a real annoying, but I don't 
because I'm so high leveled, I'm not too afraid of it. If you want to put it that way. And here's the other monster it summons. It summons the... Oh, what are these called? These Natiliuses, and these explode, which is a pain. So, you know, kill them. Set up a win tactic. Something interesting is that Lethal Tactic removes the offense debuff that uh, the Coron Toggle gives. In addition, critical hits are awesome! With Swashbuckling. It just does a lot of damage. I thought I should mention that. The fight's almost over. Uh, he's almost dead. I really want him to die. It's not gonna take that long, especially if Swashbuckling would please kick in. And now the Lethal Tactic's gonna go away, sad face. But he's so close to dead. Uh Jeez. This fight just takes so long. Oh, great. Now it just lasted two times longer. Wonderful. Okay, he's dead. Next. <laughs> Jeez. Gave me a lot of EXP. You can... I don't know if you can EXP farm on Bolt Strikers and the Nautiluses, but whatever. Get a Rending Fin. I don't remember how to get the special item at the moment, so please forgive me. As you land the fiddle blow, the monster falls into a whirlwind current, spewing fluids everywhere. You land the exhausted client your shoulder and take note of the satisfied expression on her face. It seems that winning where her ancestors could not help her let go, as well as learn from it. Your party and client congratulate each other for setting sail in the Ocean City. I'm gonna do the rest of those quests and get the items off this off screen. Otherwise you get the Koitika script, which I think is just like Hellfire except with ice, so hang on, let me see what that does. Absolute Zero, it is the same thing as Hellfire, except it does ice. Deal powerful ice damage to all enemies at the random start of the turn. Which is actually at at the start of the next turn for some reason, I don't I don't know why. I think that's either a typo or what. But let's go back to sequesting, back to solo, and let's see if I can face the Manticore. I'm basically just gonna keep going up until I get until I can't beat them. So, next up on the list is Room of the Giants. I think I can do the Manticore at this point. I'm not sure about Dame Van the Tower of Victory, but let's try fit Ruins of the Giants. Uh, the Ruins of the Giants are said to be made for the Great Calamity, previous explorers, blah 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 blah. Uh, I usually use the Syngenical Sisters when I use to go through this fight. It, how I did it with the Syngenical Sisters. I essentially just went in with uh, Kiera and Sarah. And essentially, all I would do is just spam healing. Weak. Fire. He's weak. Ice. He's weak. The sisters each do 600 damage. Well! Isn't that just great? <laughs> okay, that was really bad. And I submit that's really bad, but the Sygenical Sisters really is the best way to do this. I just have to remember to spam Hardy Heal on the first turn, too. It may also help if I can get the Hellfire combo off before, you know, anything special happens. But, I'm not gonna complain too much about that, let's try that again, because I know that combo works. I just have to remember to actually spam party heal, because uh, she's slower. So, let's get this done and going again. Thankfully, the game saves every time I do this, because it's an option. So, we go back to the Ruins of the Giants, we go back to the Genical Sisters, and blah blah blah, and then we bring back Kiara and Zara, and then we do this again. <laughs> We're just gonna get Hellfire again. I switched it up and used Absolute Zero so that you could see what it looks like, but I'm too stupid to do it. Uh, blah 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 Get back on there and back into the fight! Okay. This time literally, spam party heal. Everyone else use Epic Charge. Everyone else be awesome! Yeah, that, that's gonna help a lot more. Except for the fact that Zara's gonna die really fast. Well, Kiara's gonna... Actually, Kiara's Royal Veil will help heal her back up. Okay, so you just keep spamming and everyone else just fling the elements. See, 900, theirs is gonna do 600-ish. you think with all these high numbers that this would get done relatively fast, you think, right? Well, I don't know if that's the case. So everyone spam Epic Charge again, and he's standing ready this time, so... Now he's obviously expecting us to fling the attacks. And it's gonna hurt when he counters them. But, we'll just have to see how this goes. He's at half health. Oh, also, he comes back to, like, the half health after you try killing him the first time. Um... <laughs> well! Um, res, please. Begins to regenerate health. Uh, it's like it's its own monk princess of its own, and it's gonna heal 200 per turn, and it's gonna be annoying! 
And Zara lost her stuff, and that's fine. Push in. Why did I attack? It's gonna use multi hammer. Oh, okay, it's just gonna. Thank you for being stupid. Uh, you use line heal and epic charge. You know, the easy stuff. And as I said, it's gonna come back to half health the moment I kill it, so this is not gone this is not gone to waste. And Sapphire and Amber are dying, so I have to go tend to them, and everyone's using Epic Charge this turn, and it's gonna be so awesome. Uh Lion Heal. Fling fire, fling fire. It stands ready. This is gonna kill it though. And then it survives and it gains 2,000, and then it's gonna kill Zara's clone. And then this Zara's gonna die. And then that. Mage is gonna die, and then Amber's gonna die. Is Amber defending or something? I I can't tell. Really, I can't. So I'm just gonna spend this turn resurrecting and <laughs> not caring really. Uh, she's almost out of healing CP, and I really want to get this fight done. Hellfire! I know Zara isn't gonna be the one using it, but oh well, what you gonna do? I don't know if Aether Charge will work if uh, Kiara does it. Experiment! Experimental time. Oh, I don't care anymore. I wonder if, uh, it will get... No, it doesn't seem to get the other charge boost. In fact, it didn't look super effective at all. What was the deal there? I'm guessing it's because it didn't get the boost that that's happened, but... Oh well. You're dead. Yeah, I didn't get the boost. And so, Kiara levels. Golem, statue finger. Statue defeated. Blah blah blah, high-pitched laughter. Complete reversal of how you find them in the ocean city. The battle was exhausting enough, but the sound of their spirited giggles only fatigues you more. Disgusted with the sisters who struggle to keep up, complaining all the while you set sail again. Welcome back, everyone! Statue! Stuff! Statue! Man, this, this idiot is all about statues today. We'll have to scholars to help find the answers. Did a great job! Get a ward spell! Yay! Set sail. No, we're not setting sail. Sequesting! And, last but not least, we have the Manticore. Which, we have a missile type for, uh missile toe fight beforehand. But I don't think the Manticore is hard, I just think you need party refresh if you want to get it done. Uh, Dark Forest. An adventurer has heard rumors of the unknown beast, blah blah blah, hoping to fight the Manticore he sets forth. Primitive Island, blah blah blah, stuff. He's a... The Wanderer is level 45. That means I'm supposed to, I'm about the level I'm supposed to do this, so... Amino, Kira, Zara, Mina. Awesome. Okay, let's go in with Absolute Zero, and Win Tactic. Win Tactic! I love this song a lot. Alright, let's get this done. The party of the adventurer disembarked in the island, cutting through the thick foliage. Having been here, bef haven't been here before, you offer the guide the way. It'd be dangerous to go alone. It's dangerous to go alone! Take this! The client reluctantly accepts and follows you to the depths of the forest. The client says he'll be fine from here on, and just as he does, the trees begin to wriggle. No going forward or the back without defeating the monsters, the client has raised his guard, following his lead, following the dark forest. Meet the mistletoes. Uh, this is the only time- I think this is the only time mistletoes appear. It, they're kind of- I don't like them very much, they flink statuses. Otherwise, I don't think it's worth wasting TP on them, just- I'm just gonna use them to raise my limit. <laughs> really, that's all they're good for. Oh no! Poison that does 154. That's actually really painful. But really... I do not find these guys as problems. See, instant death! They're, they're subtle to instant death. And Zara died. Oh well. Okay, Kira doesn't die. Uh, defend. No, bodyguard, bodyguard. Body... Wrong bodyguard. Bodyguard. Resurrect. And... Zara needs to stop dying. And defend. Why am I not bugging with this last one? I have no idea. Oh well. Fight's over already. Well, fine. We'll get the proboscis and then some stuff happens and we fight the monocore. I'm sure there were words in there, but I'm not too concerned with them. Healing. So let's get this fight started with a win tactic and we'll revive Zara in a second. And I know this fight isn't going to be as easy as the other two, so I'm going to actually have to sit tight. Fight Flame, Provoke, Healing. You spam Sour Toby. You bring Zara back from the dead. 
you keep getting more limits so we can set up the next, uh, thing. I think the Manticore is capable of summoning more Mistletoes. I'm not sure. <sighs> Why must everything have something that can put someone else to sleep? Really? <laughs> I just find that annoying. Uh, Party Heal and you, Ether Charge, and... This is, uh, not hard. This is annoying, though. I mean, it's annoying that he's using these things, but it's not working on his behalf. I have absolute zero ready, but I'm not going to use it. In fact, I'm still weakness testing, so may as well. Eh, he's only halfway dead and... Arrgh! You are so annoying! <laughs> Hey, he's not weak to fire, he's weak to ice? Really, I, that's all I think this guy is, is annoying! Sarah's gonna die, but seriously, fight is equal to- No, Sarah's not gonna die, because the poison's weak. Really, I expected it to be stronger. But, okay. See, this isn't, isn't really turning out to be all that hard. Oh no, blind! The best part's that only Amun is blind, so I don't mind. Jeez. It doesn't matter to me if Amina is blind. Right now, all I need her to do is bodyguard Zera. Really. And you just keep spamming fire. It seems to have the least resistance to fire. Maybe, I don't know. It's... I just... Ugh. Did I bring Therica Bees? Awesome. Mina, do you have a Medica? Awesome. Just, uh, uh, why? Why are you so annoying? That's all he is, is annoying. He has so many status inflictions, but he doesn't do anything else. And a party refresh is just gonna help me cheese through this. Really, really, really. Okay, absolute zero ether charge combo initiate. Really want this to start ending. Please don't go to sleep. Thank you. Party heal. Uh, let's see if what this ether uh, charge absolute zero will do. 477, 1200 HP. <sighs> Editing this is gonna be awesome. Uh. Whoa, this is just annoying. It, it's not hard, it's just annoying. Really, if this... It's just... Annoying. I should be setting up the next win tactic, but I keep forgetting. But, uh Ugh. Uh. Wow. Really you think. Get a Kaguru out. Maybe it will distract him. No, it just it didn't distract him. It just... This is not hard! It's annoying! It's not hard! Well, it is kind of hard because I'm swinging around so nilly-willy, but because I have... If you have party refresh, this fight's not as big as a deal. Plus a few backup Fenritas and stuff and Derek of Bees in case, you know, something goes wrong. But otherwise, nothing about this height is hard. To get a special item, I think you have to kill him with poison. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Monster's large body collapses to the ground, slams certain victory. Blah, blah, blah. I need to end this episode, like, right now, because I'm getting really tired. Welcome back to Marine Savage out of the forest, and Monster was there, giving my... Give me my thing already, I'm just kind of breezing through this. It, it's it, give me the assist script. What does the assist script do? Custom limit assist scripts. Okay. Regroup tactic. All, rec all allies recover HP and status elements for five turns at the turn start. That's a really good one. You no, know, I requires two people, and it's a really good one. I like it too. Well, hey guys, this has been Life Break. This has been a long episode, but we got a lot of things done. Mo we didn't progress in the labyrinth, but we did three C-Quest bosses and two quests. I think that's good enough. Bye.